Hi, my name is Joe Gardner, and today I'm going to illustrate how you can automate the auditing of your systems against the technical requirements of GDPR. When we think about auditing our systems and ensuring that they comply with any security standard, GDPR or not, it really starts with the systems that we're managing, the systems that are making our line of business applications work, that are running the applications that are central to our business. And this might involve a data center or some kind of on-premise deployment. But more and more, an element of cloud is part of this solution. And, and often they operate this in a hybrid manner. So we typically see some back-end systems, like a database cluster of some sort, maybe storage, whatever it happens to be. And then in the cloud, far more ephemeral services, potentially web front ends, that kind of thing. The first thing that we need to do with Chef to get any kind of insight into these systems is get the Chef agent installed. This is really the point at which Chef interacts with your systems. And there are many ways in which you can distribute the Chef agent. This could be part of an infrastructure orchestration or provisioning phase. It could be part of your server images. It could be part of your application deployment pipeline. Whatever it happens to be, this is always the first step to make sure that the agent is distributed across our systems. And once we've done that, we can establish what we call a baseline of compliance using Chef Compliance. And what does that mean? Well, if we think about some of the traditional ways of handling responsibilities when it comes to compliance, we're often faced with handling large PDF documents where we have, you know, the standard, whatever it happens to be. Maybe we have a description of the control, a technical example. And this documentation is very rarely lightweight. It often looks something like this. It's a pretty hefty document and applying these controls or auditing for these controls across all of our systems is complex, it's hard to do, it's slow. And this is why we see these patterns of peaks and troughs when it comes to compliance scanning. We know that an audit's coming up um, and we put a lot of effort into making sure that we're going to pass that audit. And then in between those audits, whether they're quarterly, biannual, annual, whatever it happens to be, our understanding of those systems drops. And we really have no insight into that. And if we think about GDPR, if we're designing systems that are pr private by design, we really need to always be checking whether or not our systems are in a state that are going to, that's going to ensure the privacy of our customers and users' data. So our approach is to redefine this documentation as code. And so what we've done is we've turned this documentation into something that we can execute. And this is in a language called InSpec. And this language lets us define all the usual things you would expect to see in a technical control. So the description of the control, there's a unique identifier, the impact, which is the likelihood versus the potential impact on the business, that comes out with a score. And then finally, the test itself, which could be firewall configuration, is encryption turned on, what's the minimum password length required, a whole range of things that are going to ensure that our systems stay secure and that our data remains private. And so once we've defined these security controls in InSpec, we're then able to execute them against our system as if it was application code. And so what happens is the Chef agent runs on our servers. The default is every 30 minutes, but the point is it's a regular schedule. And when it runs, it downloads this profile written in InSpec, compiles and executes, runs the tests that we've defined against our system and produces a load of data. Now, we need to make sure we can access this data. And this is where the reporting element of the Chef Automate platform comes in. 
This is called Chef Visibility. And what Chef Visibility does is it collects all the data being passed into the Chef Automate platform and it makes it very easy to understand. So it presents it in bar graphs and pie charts and all the usual data visualization tools that you'd expect. Now the really important thing is that this data is now being pulled out of the, the field of the operators and into the business as a whole. It's incredibly easy to understand and read this visualization, which of course means that then the people who need to act on this data can do so. And often they are our IT teams, whether it's ops, whether it's dev, whether it's DevOps, whatever you want to call them, the point is that now they can access this information very easily. Remember, it's being updated every 30 minutes, so it's very, very regular, up-to-date information about the state of our systems. And they can now make informed decisions about how they treat the risks that are being identified by our inspect scans. So what we've done here in the first stage is to detect potential issues that compromise on our GDPR compliance. So just to summarize, we've redefined our technical controls in inspect code and via our chef agent, we've run those tests against our machines on a regular schedule. And then we've collected the data from those results and made it easy to access through the chef visibility dashboard. And of course that's feeding into our technical teams. So now that they have this information, they need to act upon it. And this is where um, the remediation part of the operations dev IT team comes into play. And there are many ways in which they can do this, but fortunately we have a really awesome config management tool called Chef. So in the Chef world, we're going to produce Chef code. that declares the state our machines to need to be in, in order to comply with the controls of GDPR. So this is going to be all of our system configuration code. And we store this centrally in our Chef server. This is like a central repository for storing all of our Chef code. So then via the same mechanism, the Chef agent, when it runs on its schedule, yes, it's auditing our systems, but it's also connecting to the Chef server authenticating and then downloading the relevant policy and applying it on the machine. Now, hopefully that code will remediate our systems, but if it doesn't, at the end of the config stage, it's going to run the inspect profile, the audit phase again. So the point is that we're establishing this continuous flow between detecting systems and hopefully with our chef code, correcting systems as well. And so by adopting this continuous flow through from detect within spec to correct via our ops team and chef code, we're able to establish what we call continuous compliance for GDPR.